Asante sana kwa kuendelea kutazama kipindi cha Kenya's Gold kipindi ambacho ni ashirafu taifa la Kenya kuhusiana na masuala ya kilimo na kurusha kwake ngina. Now in case you're just joining us, welcome to Kenya's Gold. The focus today is on learning so much about soil testing and the soil health. Normally on Tuesday we focus on sugarcane and maize, but today we do want to learn more about the soil that supports the growth of these crops. Now today we are identifying three different types of soil tests. Kunaile nutrient tests, the one that we commonly do even here back at home. Kama unataka kupanda kitu ambacho does well in soil that is less acidic, unapima, unajua, and also so you test the pH. Now also we have the biological test which is what we're going to be getting into for this second part of the show. This test helps you identify if your soil is alive or not. And then finally we've learned that there is a different type of test called the stability test which does monitor if your soil has resistance to soil erosion. So for now we are going to go straight to the United States of America to learn about the biological test of your soil. Take a look at what we found. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having us here at Shrek. Yep. And I'm here to learn so much about soil testing. I came with some soil. Wonderful. <laughs> right. But before we even get into the action of it, I just want to get to know you a bit more. Tell us your name and what you do here. Wonderful. Yeah. My name is Marie English. Um, I'm the lab manager here at the Shrek Lab. We just opened last um, about a month and a half ago on Earth Day. Mm -hmm. um, we're really excited to expand the capacity of testing at UVM, the soil testing, and be able to offer more tests. Right. What does Shrek stand for? Because there's someone who's watching and probably thinking it's the anime <laughs> and it's not. So Great what acronym. Is <laughs> what is Shrek? What does it represent? Um, Shrek stands for Soil Health Research and Extension Center. So what's exciting is that we have the soil health testing part. Um, that's my main job. That's what I'm excited about is quality control, you know, run, standardizing tests um, with other labs and coming up with these um, indicators that are really showing us if management is responding um, or if soil is responding to the management that mm -hmm. farmers are doing. Right. Um, and so this is supposed to complement uh, traditional fertility testing. Right. So when you say you want to see if the soil is responding to the management that our farmers are taking, mm -hmm. what are these management practices? What are these things that farmers are doing here in the United States, in Vermont, to try and make sure that they're keeping the soil healthy? You know, some things that are recommended in other states and in Vermont, you can do cover cropping, you can do, there's different types of no-till. We'll be looking at comparing different no-till techniques. Um, there's different ways to rotate crops. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just, we're working on building a database of the information, um, the way, the management that's working for growers right. um, and how, how the soils respond to that. Right, so cover cropping, crop rotation, you can see some of the management practices that are working for farmers here. Exactly. Good. Mm -hmm. So now when we are talking about testing, there are two types of testing and the one that we are so used to seeing, especially us from my country, is mm -hmm. when we are testing the nutrient level in the soil so that a farmer knows, I want to grow maize this season. What am I lacking? Nitrogen. Okay, let me buy, you know, manure or fertilizer that has nitrogen. But here you do a different kind of testing. We do. Tell us about that type of testing. So this is soil health testing. Um, there are some great labs across the country that, you know, have been working hard to come up with different indicators, different tests um, that show that you have a lot of biology in your soil, that it's alive, right? We want an active soil that's going to be resilient to droughts, um, that's going to hold more water during the season. Um, the, the biology is responsible for the nutrient cycling, and that can increase yields. So soil health has been prescribed as um, a way to look at if your soil um, is is living you know <laughs> is, yes. is doing well and that's what you check in here and that's what we check here you're not just checking the nutrients whether it has nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium you're checking if your soil is alive and exactly healthy. right mm -hmm. now when you bring the soil in this um, plastic bags mm -hmm. for this test Will it affect um, the results? Because normally when we're testing our soils, we're advised to take our soils in brown 
sample bags. Mm -hmm. Why is it different here that we have these plastic bags? Sure, so for some of the microbiological tests that we do, we need to preserve the state of that soil when you collected it. And so we wanna keep um, the, the biology that was living out there um, as close to that state as we can. And so we need the moisture level to stay consistent, so we've gotta use plastic right. for that. And then we, we ask that people keep their samples cool until they can deliver it to the lab. Uh -huh. And that's just for certain tests, um, but, but we're doing, yeah, that's how we collect the soil so uh -huh. that we could do. All right, so here because test. it's a unique type of a test, it's not just mm -hmm. checking the nutrients, you're checking the, how alive your soil is, mm -hmm. it's okay to bring it like this. It because is. Because you're maintaining the moisture and all that. Correct. Good, mm -hmm. thank you for that. Yeah. So now, once a farmer brings their soil here, mm -hmm. they're keen to know how alive their soil is, what is the first step, what do you do, do you record what you have received, do you keep data on it, how does yeah. that happen here? Definitely. Yeah. Um, when we get a sample, it comes in and we give it a unique ID. We take half the sample mm -hmm. and we actually save that for a test called wet aggregate stability. And we'll show you that downstairs. Um, that's a, a test that tests, uh, that looks at how your aggregates, um, how stable they are okay. to um, uh, disturbance. And so we actually, you know, before we sieve all the soil, we want, we take a subsample out. Then we sieve the rest of it to two millimeters. You can see that here. And Wait we, a minute. Mm -hmm. So when you receive it, you remove half of it? We, yeah, we remove a subsample. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that half will be used to test? Aggregate stability. Uh -huh. So you keep these aggregates intact instead of pushing them through a sieve. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? So it's so, a little bit different of a test. Right. So when you said um, it's used to test how, how stable your soil is to disruption, mm -hmm. are those some of the things that could happen, let's say, when there's flooding? Or what kind of disruption are we talking about? Definitely. You'll see the machine downstairs, um, we, we dunk it. Uh -huh. And so it, it can tell you a little bit about your stability to erosion, right? Ooh, okay. okay. So, but it's tied to biology, right? So the fungal hyphae, the um, bacterial, they, um, you know, work to the, the plant roots. Um, stabilize the soil okay. and that's what creates those aggregates so that's why as a soil health lab yeah. <laughs> focusing on biological indicators this physical test is actually an important one right so we'll check the stability with half of the soil that you're going to put aside and mm -hmm. then now the other soil that you're left with here what happens next what happens next is um it gets uh most of it gets air dried and um we sieve it to two millimeters to remove the roots and rocks Mm -hmm. Standard practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we run. Um, yeah, because this one is completely dry as compared to this. Mm -hmm. How do you achieve this um, texture? Uh, we sieve using, you know, two millimeter sieve. Let's see here. That's eight millimeter. So we'll see. Not the right one. But um, we've got a bunch. They're all downstairs in okay. our sieving room. We'll uh -huh. show you that. So you sieve it mm -hmm. and dry it. And we dry it. Leaving it open. Um, how do you dry it? Yep, we dry it in um, brown paper bags and um, that, that's in an incubator okay. downstairs. How long does it take for you to for you to dry and get the texture that you want? Uh, two days. Oh, okay. Yep, at 35C. Uh-huh, uh-huh, mm -hmm. okay. That's pretty standard, yeah, and soil health lab. And then we get lab. this. And then we get this. All right, mm -hmm. so after this, where do we go? After that, mm -hmm. um, we take the soil, and one of the first tests we do on all of our samples is a rapid soil texture test. Here you can see um, the silt and sand fractions after it's been, we um, shake it to disrupt that, you know, any remaining to really like disrupt all of these, any clay So this aggregates. is put here? This is put um, into a 50 mil conical tube Mm -hmm. with uh, sodium hexametaphosphate, we shake it. That mm -hmm. helps um, to disrupt everything. Okay. And then we pour it over a 53 micron sieve. Mm -hmm. And what's, this helps us fractionate it and give an estimate of sand, silt, and clay because texture is a really important part right. of telling you about it. Mm -hmm. So what's so. the nature of the soil that is found here in Vermont? We have a wide range of soils here in Vermont. Um, that's why we think it's important to have some kind of texture test done on each sample. Mm -hmm so that um, we can give context to the results that we get. We have heavy clay soils and we have sandy soils. Great, <laughs> yeah. so once we have this, 
Mm -hmm. Where do we go? How much of this is put into this? Do you put all of it? Or 14 it grams. Not a lot. Oh, okay. All but, right. Yep. Enough okay. to get an idea. And then we use the soil texture triangle to tell us the texture class of the soil. Okay. Yep. Great. So after here? Once we know the texture, um, we come over. So assume the texture could either be? Um, yeah. yeah. Let's say we had a clay soil. Okay. okay. So there we'll tell you whether it's clay or... For most clays, actually Virgin's clay, some of, we have really high clay soils, that test isn't great. We would use our pario instrument, something okay. a little more advanced, but okay. that's good for loam soils. All right. And, and, and a lot of those, yeah. Okay. So, so by the time but, you're leaving that station, you mm -hmm. are aware what texture your soil is. Yep, yep. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so then we use colorimetric um, methods, uh, these 96 well plates, to tell us about two key uh, carbon and a nitrogen pool, um, two you know key nutrient pools. And this test is the one right here um, is permanganate oxidizable carbon, and you know you can measure total carbon is really common or organic matter, but this pool has been shown to respond to management more quickly. And it's because um, this pool of carbon that we're interested in measuring, it, it's usually correlated with um, like a lot of, if you have more cover crop on the top um, that gets broken down, um, you'll probably have more higher permanganate oxidizable carbon and that pool reacts with um, potassium permanganate. Mm -hmm. And we're able to um, shake the soil with that chemical, a reaction happens. So, so in this case tube you here. put a soil sample here, mm -hmm. then you add this chemical, mm -hmm. and, and then we are testing there. And then we test it um, on a microplate reader. All right. There. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to see the carbon. The amount of carbon. Mm -hmm. It's a specific pool of carbon. Yeah. yeah. And nitrogen as well. And then that's a separate test, but it looks similar to this. Right. So, so what do you want to see one. in the soil? High carbon, mm -hmm. low carbon, high nitrogen, low nitrogen. What is a yeah. healthy soil? What does it need to, to have? Great question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are um, higher is better tests for these two. So a higher um, permanganate oxidizable carbon is a great thing. That's, that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, that means there's more nutrients available for your plants. That means that your a soil might be more stable, that it has better water holding capacity. Typically, carbon, higher carbon is correlated with those things. Right. So um, the plan is you want your soils to have more carbon. Mm -hmm. All right. OK. Yep. It's OK. So once we're done here, where do mm -hmm. we go next? Next, we um, go to a test called soil respiration. Mm -hmm. And this is a way to look at the biological activity of the soil. This okay. is a, a common method um, because it's so hard to culture microbes. We can only culture less than like 1%. We have to use these indirect methods. Mm -hmm. And so this instrument can measure the CO2 that comes off of the soil. Um, and that's an indirect measure of the amount of microbial biomass mm -hmm. and the organic matter that they have to chew on mm -hmm. in there. So this is also higher is better. So we put a little soil sample inside there. And mm -hmm. then we, um, this is called the CO2 burst method. Mm -hmm. We re-wet the soil. And then for 24 hours, we measure um, the CO2 that's, that's respired. All right. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what are you trying to see here? Um, here we're trying to see the we, microbial activity. So, okay. so how active is that soil? So do you want to see more CO2 come out? You do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that will mean there's activity in your soil. Um, yep, All it's right. active. Mm -hmm. And there are different, uh, there are different jars. Mm -hmm. So if this is checking CO2, what is this checking? They're actually, these are all set up for, for CO2 right, right now. So They're just different, different soils. From uh, samples from different farmers? Yep. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, and you'll keep it here for how long? 24 hours. Mm -hmm. yep. And then after test. that, are you done? After that, um, we are, yes, yeah. You're done. able to give um, farmer feedback from what you have seen here. We are an a la carte service. Um, so it's kind of like giving people an opportunity to pick which tests make the most sense for their management changes. Mm -hmm. um, we can also, we're working on putting a package together where you would get all of those tests. Mm -hmm. um, and then working with our extension side, you know, to uh, see how our soils respond to these tests. Right. And then inform. So there's a farmer who's watching you right now and they're used to doing the usual, you know, nutrient test before planting, okay? Yeah. Please that's talk great. to them why they really need to 
also consider this other test? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. Soil health testing can still be a little bit expensive. Um, we're excited to try to offer these tests as affordably as possible, um, but it's, it's really a great way to make sure that your soil is going to hold up um, in different conditions. Make sure that there's resiliency to your soil. Right. A living soil is going to provide higher yields typically, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're excited that these tests um, can show that you've got a soil that's that's gonna um, be you know really great uh, throughout different all the different environmental changes that right. we get you know so just break down for me mm -hmm. now the very important elements that need to be present in a healthy soil yeah we look at um, you know carbon to nitrogen ratios can give you some information carbon and nitrogen ratio mm -hmm. what we want more carbon in the soil we want more carbon in the soil, but you also need a good amount of nitrogen as well. So we have the carbon-nitrogen ratio. Uh -huh. Fungal to bacterial ratios, that's a test that we're in development on. So you um, also need some fung fungi and bacteria in the soil? You do, yeah. Uh -huh. fung fung fungi are great. They help provide um, fungal hyphae, form those, um, help form aggregate structures, you know. So those are, um, we, they're hard to measure, um, and, but there's a couple tests out there that we're trying to be able to hone in right. on that for farmers. Resilient soil. Good. Thank yeah. you so much for speaking to us, and you're yeah. so passionate about what you're doing where did you, do you develop this love for the soil and agriculture because you are in the value chain thank you <laughs> yeah it's interesting I've, I've definitely I'm passionate about doing lab work and you know just spending time um, I love I have a master's in soil science from the University of Tennessee and really got exposed to the below ground world and and I think soils are underrated. There's so ex there's so much going on down there. It's a really heterogeneous environment um, with a and there's a lot we don't know. There's thousands of different carbon compounds, lots of microbes um, that we're still studying. So I see it as this exciting world um, that has real world implications, right. right? That we need healthy soils to feed people. <laughs> and right. So yeah, that's what, how I kind of came to um, the soil health world. So in case a farmer brings in the soil sample today, how soon should they expect um, feedback on results from your end? Um, sure, right now we're looking at about a six week turnaround time. Uh -huh. In six weeks they get full details on how healthy and alive their soil is. Is mm -hmm. it an expensive um, cost implication for them? Right now our tests, we're trying to offer them as affordably as possible. Okay. Yeah, um, and that's why we're doing the a la carte option where right. you can pick which ones right. to run. <laughs> is it growing? Is the curiosity for farmers to learn about the health of their soils growing? Are they taking this test or they're still stuck in the usual nutrient test? Definitely. This lab was born from an interest from growers in the region. Right. Um, people are yeah, really excited to know how these changes, um, how different management changes are affecting their soils. Right. And so, um, yeah, we're excited to be offering um, more tests that can show how, right. how healthy your soil is. Great. Thank you so very much for speaking to us and yeah. opening our eyes to a different kind of test as opposed to the other one that we are used to. And keep up the good job. You're making you. agriculture look so Cool, <laughs> and getting it very right. Thank, Thank you, you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Thanks.